Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we are talking about a new update for the Redmi K20 Pro. Now this update is not available in India yet. In India we are still at 12.0.4 but we are talking about the global update of 12.0.5.0 which brings the February security patch. I have been on this update for the last two to three days. We'll check out some benchmark numbers and I'll generally tell you what it really feels like. This is not exactly a detailed review. This is a very very quick preview of what I experienced while using this update in the last two to three days. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. You can follow us there and have some fun. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Smartphone Tutorials. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, now first things first, why are we talking about this particular update when it is not available in India? Because I expect a most of, you know, most of my subscriber count, most of the subscribers on smartphone tutorials to have an unlocked bootloader. After I released the video for the EEA stable version, a lot of people have been telling me about, uh, you know, the Play Store not being certified, Amazon Prime not playing in HD. You will encounter a couple of things like that in this ROM as well if you're unlocked and you flash this through Orange Fox. But before we actually get into the preview, let me tell you that you can directly flash this from any custom recovery and you should be good to go. Uh, I don't watch a lot of Amazon Prime on my phone. I do watch it on the computer, so I don't really have any problems there. But I will be posting a video in which we will be fixing the Play Store not certified. So, you know, you can simply flash it from Orange Fox and you should be good to go. All right, so let's begin with a quick preview, shall we? So when we go to About Phone, you will notice that it does say MIA version is MIA Global 12.0.5 stable. So it doesn't say any new update, of course, because it's the latest. The change log over here says updated Android security patch to February 2021 increased system security. So overall, over the EEA 12.0.4 version, I don't expect to see a lot of changes over here. But I'll tell you why this update is important if you are on the Indian variant. So if you go to all specifications, you do see that the security patch has been moved up to the 1st of February. It does say a random model number. This, of course, is a 6 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte K20 Pro octa-core 2.84 gigahertz on the snapdragon 855 now moving on f if we have a look at the launcher over here you do see that this is a system launcher nothing new there the global variants do get the system launcher and to the left you do have the app vault which has sort of a google-esque sort of a news feed it is not exactly google but yeah it's there and another thing that you would have noticed here at the bottom is that i am using the android 10 gestures you also have the option of hiding the full screen indicator so that is something nice and to the left and right you do have the google assistant shortcuts so that is neat of course all the other goodies of miui 12 like super wallpaper and all the other things are available but if we actually go to the security option or the security app from xiaomi and we actually launch game turbo you do see that it doesn't really get the voice changer which i think will only get uh, you know the k20 pro will only get it after it gets the 12.5 update or something like that so if we actually pull up game turbo over here you do see you have all sorts of options including screen recording and stuff but i don't see an option of miui voice changer apart from that if we actually go to the notification tiles or quick tiles whatever you want to call it you have your usual drill usual stuff you do have the nfc option over here nfc of course will not work on your indian variant because we simply don't have the hardware the next thing that you're going to talk about is charging and battery speed because in quick previews i'm just going to cover the core core thing Things which will answer that you know you should go ahead and invest your time in upgrading or downgrading to this particular ROM from your custom ROM or not but nonetheless the battery charging speed is absolutely fine I've not had any problems even the battery backup has been pretty pretty good now do remember this is my secondary device I 
do get quite less calls compared to my primary phone that is the iPhone but even then I am able to go ahead and review things because even from a phone that is not used much you do get an estimate of regular usage as to you know how accurate or how better or bad the battery and charging performance is so the battery and charging is pretty good uh, the battery life I did get five to six hours of screen on time in minimal to you know heavy usage which is completely fine now if you keep going you do have additional settings again you know nothing much over here all usual drill i have set the region to india so no problem there if you go to sim cards and mobile networks you do have your wi-fi calling working absolutely fine so you know all the basic functionalities even if you have a look at the camera it opens pretty pretty soon you don't really have any problems if you go to more you do have all your modes available you can also go ahead and edit over here and set other options so that is something really really neat and interesting but at the bottom over here you do have your usual stuff say if you go to video over here there you go you do have 4K at 60 FPS, you can enable show grid lines, track moving object, all the advanced features which were available on K20 Pro is still available on this particular update and uh, yeah, the front camera works like a charm, even the front portrait mode is working great. So, you know, there are not major, major issues when it comes to using this ROM as a daily driver at all. The only thing or the only issue, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is if you go to Play Store, and say you tap the three dots over here or three lines go to settings you will see that it says device is not certified now i have not gone ahead and taken the pain to you know go ahead and uh, enable or fix that feature so i will be making a dedicated video on that and we will see if amazon prime will start working in hd after we actually go ahead and make that fix so all in all you know this rom is pretty good it does come with all the great features just like eea stable there is nothing missing from eea stable over here there is some bloatware which you can of course go ahead and remove you won't really have a problem now let's talk about the benchmarks that will give us a glimpse of what exactly the performance is and later i will do a gaming live Live stream and maybe a gaming review as well so that you can find out if PUBG is your thing or Call of Duty Mobile is your thing you really want to install this update and you really want to stick to this or not but first things first let's talk about Android 2 benchmark now as you saw a glimpse over here 439,067 points, 137,966, 17425, 62,385, 68,291. Now, the good thing over here or the bad thing, I don't really know, is that uh, even in 10.3.3 and 10.3.5, we got more or less the same score in uh, Antutu. So, yeah, Xiaomi has a way of making sure that whenever Antutu is ran, you do get a consistent score so that you don't feel that there is some discrepancy going on. Now, moving on, we're going to talk about Geekbench 5. So I did have a cool run over here. By cool run, I mean that, you know, the phone was kept off for 10 to 15 minutes, then it turned on, kept it on for a couple of minutes, let all, all the services and everything warm up and launch. And then we got 723 single core, 2540 multi core. Now, this right here is a pretty decent score for a non-debloated non stock ROM, if you will. And uh, the transition animations and everything else is also working pretty good. See if you have a look. Now, you do see that, you know, there is a small stutter which was there. So, yeah, that's, that's basically MIUI 12 for you. Can't really say much about that. But talking about the gaming performance, there is one benchmark which should give us a hint of how exactly does it perform. And that is 3D Mark. So we will quickly launch 3D Mark over here and you go to my device, all right, and my results. Now first in my device, you do see that it says your best score 2046, Xiaomi Mi 90 Pro 2062. So same ballpark, Q2021 average 2974. So we did score 2046 for the Vulcan test and uh, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty decent ROM, not many problems there. You do have a graph at the bottom over here, battery, frame rate. So, you know, this is this is a pretty neat uh, study, if you will. If you see over here, wildlife, this, that, does that. So the FPS kept on going up, down, up, down. It went all the way down over here, if you can see. So, you know, I'm not saying that you will have a out of the world gaming experience in this particular ROM. But if you are someone who wants to be on stock MIUI without any mods, like not even Xiaomi.eu, you can try the EEA stable. And if you want the latest security patch, this is the ROM, you can definitely give it a try. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a video on how to fix the Play Store not certified error and whether it will fix the prime video not playing in HD or not. 
All in all, decent ROM, you can give it a try. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section about this video. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at Smartphone Tutorials. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.